thank you first of all for doing this. Oh, of course, Joey. Thanks, man, I, for having me. Oh, my pleasure. I uh, I think it's always interesting to see what you sign up to do because I think your specialty is kind of making movies no one makes anymore, and movies that used to get made a lot. Well, uh, yeah, you're not the first first person to have said that, and and that's really kind of a sad state of cinema. Uh, I, I'm uh, because I look for those type totally. of films, you know, 52 weeks out of the year, and it feels like the types of films that I make when they're made are all jammed into the last uh, I don't know six or eight weeks of of the year, and and uh, I think it's difficult for people to, to get out. Um, yeah. Uh, to see the films and that's ultimately the harbinger of, of whether we get to make them or not is our people coming to see them um, yeah, but uh, I, I won't stop until people stop me exactly people stop people <laughs> stop paying you and people stop seeing them and then yes. then you'll make them in your head but that's no right. there's there's something about you know every every time one of these has come out even going back to, to crazy heart it feels they always feel modern, but they have this throwback quality of it feels like a movie that a guy who was a filmmaker in the 70s would have made as like, I want to I want to break it down and just do a character movie. And, yeah, then well, and that's uh, quite honestly by design, because yeah. that's the, that's the uh, era of filmmaking that I most respond to and that I continue to watch over and over. And, and thankfully, some of the actors and the directors who were making some of the, the best films then have kind of embraced me and mentored me and um, and and kind of has said the same things. Thanks for, you know, putting up the good fight and, and trying to carry on that lineage that certainly meant so much to me and, and, and to others. So thanks for noticing that. Oh, yeah. It's why uh, it's why I think well, one of the reasons, at least, that the cast that you get into the cast that you get, because who doesn't want to do these? Most most actors you know, sure. When you when you're a kid, you grow up pretending to be an astronaut and you know fighting dinosaurs and all that. And listen, you can do that very easily now. But you also imagine, you know, cowboys and Indians. You imagine like just, you know, going on something to save your brother. Like you just you're doing these very simple, very character based things because as a kid, you don't necessarily know that that's not inherently what is seen as a big movie. You know, so like there's a reason that Christian Bell keeps coming back. There's a reason that you can get. A Jeff Bridges. There's a reason that, you know, no matter the movie, it's just it's wall to wall with just quality actors, because who doesn't want to make this type of movie? Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, look, the truth is actors love to be in, in films like that, that whether I make them or or they're made by uh, by other directors uh, around the world. But uh, I'm thankful that I never really have an issue casting my films, maybe for that reason, that people want to uh, kind of inhabit these characters that that you don't often see in film or actually in, in, in television. Um, so I'm, I'm incredibly thankful. I, I do tend to have a kind of small, a small core group of actors that I, I tend to, yeah. to go back to. Uh, so I write specifically for them, kind of the Cooper rep company. Yeah. Um, but I also like performers who, who aren't trying to, I mean, look, even though of course, Jeff, Jeff Bridges uh, was awarded for, for his portrayal of bad Blake and crazy heart. Yeah. I like performers who give generally, um, uh, uh, you know, more quiet, lived-in performances, and 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 those don't those often kind of go unrecognized. Yeah. Certainly not by by you, but Robert Duvall, who's a mentor of mine, and and uh, who often who still sees almost every movie and every performance, um, he says as it, as it relates to awards, he says this um, very. Uh, uh, Tongue in cheek, he says, "The most acting equals the best acting." Yeah, and well, that's generally what 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 people get nominated for and they win for. He's and, not wrong. And, and quite honestly, I try to do the opposite of that. Sure, no, I mean that's why that's why you see, you know, I, I'll respond more to a, a Casey Affleck and an out of, out of foreign oh. first, to Jonathan Majors and Hostiles because they're doing they're doing the thing where you go if, if you've never seen them before, and with Jonathan that was very much a, oh this is a new actor. Yeah. I want to see what they do next. And and what, what you're all right. saying with the most acting, there's a sense of like, oh, yeah, I, I know what that is. And not in a bad way. I can't do it. But like you watch it and go, yeah, that's about what I thought that was going to be. No, but more people can do that than yeah. can do what Casey Affleck does in Out of the Furnace or Jonathan Major does in Hostiles. Uh, that's just the uh, and, and, and those actors know that, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, and then even even here with with Harry Melling and and. Oh. oh, I also imagine that's 
an interesting role to cast because you know you're basing it on the book you're going in your own direction it's i think people in their head have a very different view of edgar Allan poe i was joking well, with Harry. they imagine like tim burton essentially that's exactly right we're very entrenched in 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 uh understanding poe as the harbinger of of uh, the dark arts the macabre yeah. someone who's obsessed with the occult and the satanic and death and where life ends and death begins and premature burial and anxiety and paranoia uh just but, a happy but, dude yes but people, people don't realize is that poe uh after a lot of research was was really quite when he was formative and young as he is in this film was quite yeah. warm and humorous and witty and uh was thought to be a really great companion though one prone to poetic and romantic musings but i think harry gives a performance for the ages and and i've only seen him one other time and on screen, and that was in the, uh, which is why I cast him in the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, and Same. which I thought he gave one of the great performances. I'm glad we're both admitting to not having seen Harry Potter at the same time while well, he's not here. I have not. Yeah. It's not for me. It's okay, though. I see 300 movies a year. I'm allowed to miss like one. Wow. Yeah. That's more than me. I watch a lot of films, but that's I mean, a lot. I think I'm at 302, or I think you were actually 300 this year when I saw oh, it. I think. Oh, that's impressive, man. Good for you. It, that's that's listen, really cool. There, it's mostly good. There's there's also the joke of like I watch some so you don't have to because right. you know occasionally there's a movie that you go no one set out to make a bad movie but sure know what I watched right and and the, and they certainly don't I mean m- making a film is incredibly difficult mine happen to be harder than than most just yeah. because of where I shoot them and the kind of darker psy- psychological material that we're uh, that we're mining, but oh, yeah, you're, uh, you're 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 picking you're picking the easiest of subjects. You're like, you know what? Let's Whitey Bulger. Let's just make a movie about him. No one or or Joey in genres in which the yeah. greatest directors who've ever lived and made films make those films. Whether it's the gangster film, whether it's the western, whether it's in you know family trauma, a sense of horror, or even uh, films with music in them. Yeah. I mean, I, I've not certainly made it easy for me in terms of trying to make films that that aren't always compared to Ford or Hawks or Coppola or Scorsese, but you know, those are the movies that it. inspired me. Exactly. Is there is there a genre that you haven't played in that's that's interesting to you now? Yeah, probably noir. Uh and certainly, you know, living in Los Angeles and I look out my window and I see a palm tree and I almost always think uh, I, I think it was Chandler who said behind every palm tree is a dirty little secret. Yeah. So I would like to explore that. Um, uh, I think, you know, I've made films in certainly a lot of genres. Uh, I think the next one, uh, which, or one of the next two will, will be more of a straight drama, but, um, I also love, uh, Preston Sturgis. I love watching Buster Keaton. You yeah. know, I'd love to make something in, 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 you know, in that vein. But, um, but I always like to be kind of on uncomfortable ground when I'm making a film. And otherwise, I, I, I imagine making the same film over and over and over gets quite boring. You aren't pushing yourself. You aren't challenging yourself. And quite frankly, when you have children, you said this at the top of the uh, of this interview, you better choose something interesting to tell because you're away from your family for very oh. long stretches. And also, if you write them like I do, it's a, it's a very lonely existence. Oh yeah, no, you're you're sitting with something for for years. Even if someone pops in and goes, "All right, well, I'm gonna do two weeks on this movie," and then see you, nice to know you. This no is two problem. years of your life. Yes, yeah, or more. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, in 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 another era, it would have been, I think the especially the studio system, they would have been like, "Yeah, we could just put Scott on anything. Like he'll you know he'll come he'll come in under budget. No one will complain about him." And that's yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. he can do he can do a gangster movie. He can do a western. We can do a musical. Yeah, right. And that's and it's a, it's not a not a compliment, but at the same time, I feel like most people aspire to be the one that like oh they wouldn't want any part of me because they don't know what they're gonna get. And I want I want to sit down and go, did I make a masterpiece or is it unwatchable? And I don't know yet until I start to play with the edit. Right. Well, you won't know for ten or fifteen years. I mean, again, you watch three hundred films a year, but you, you, you a film will really tell you if it's good in ten years, twelve years, fifteen years. Not not a hot take from a journalist who's come out of seeing three films at Telluride. Oh, yeah. And, and, I, I, and I, did, then, I did five this year at that one day. Right. And that then uh, dictates how your film plays in the award space. So oh, yeah. uh, I think that's very difficult to do because totally. nobody sees the same film. That I can guarantee you. Yeah, everybody sees the, everybody sort of sees a movie in their head to begin with. I mean, listen, one of my one of my favorite films is Almost Famous, and it was on TV like a couple days ago. And I, it's amazing, but I remember how, and I was 
young, I wasn't doing this yet, but I remember how determined people were not to see that fucking movie. Like they released oh, the movie really? like a million times. It was a financial failure. Like it, it was. It, it it only found its audience later. Like it did fair. Wow. But they That's did, one of Cameron's best films. Oh, yeah. I love it. It did that thing where they would re-release it in theaters a couple times throughout the season just to be like, come on, you didn't see it. It's an amazing movie. Watch it. Oh, I didn't realize that. That's too bad. That's a really great film. Billy Crook's fantastic. Oh yeah, no, that movie is I mean everybody is. I love that movie. It's 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 the rare movie that I feel like it's easy to say it's perfect. And I really love Cameron. He's been very supportive of my work over the years. Awesome. I want more I want more Cameron Crowe films. Same. Um sorry to cut in, but that is time. No worries. Thank you so much. All good. All right. Thank you guys so much. Congrats again. Yeah, thank you, Joey. Happy holidays, man. Stay healthy. Take care. Be well, man.